Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, in the assurance of sins to be forgiven, we proclaim together the Gloria in its justice. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil, and to make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. You are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. 
Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one that, who had received the five talents went off at once, traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done. Good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you are a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. His master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return 
I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello. It's been a little while since I've been out here on a walk to give a sermon. And even though today the weather is glorious, well, for this part of today, the weather is glorious, the temperature's down a bit, hence the scarf and the coat that have been added to the liturgical ensemble for the day. However, enough of the weather updates and the sartorial elegance. Um, our reading. The parable of the talents, very well known and by turn helpful and infuriating. If you've ever been given a gift, and I hope you all have at some point, you know that there are certain things you do when you get a gift saying thank you is polite. And using the gift is kind of important. It may be that it's a gift that doesn't need much active use, a picture that can go on a wall or in a photo frame, perhaps. But making good use of the gift we've been given, it shows appreciation. And if you've ever given a present, and I'm sure you all have at some point, you know how nice it is to actually receive thanks for it and to know that that gift has been received well and is being used in whatever way is appropriate. In the reading, the first man was given five talents by his master because the master knew that he could deal with that. And he made five more. The master, it turns out, was right and knew exactly what he was doing. Well done, good and faithful sir. The same happened to the man who had two talents. He made two more and his master said, well done, good and faithful servant, when he returned. And the master expected the one with one talent to use that talent too. He knew what the servant could do. He didn't give him more than he could deal with. He gave him one talent and asked him to take care of it. God never asks us to do things we can't do. No good at maths, don't worry, you're not going to be an accountant. Actually, I think there are some accountants who probably aren't very good at maths, but that's another issue entirely. The last man could have done something with his talent. Was he lazy? Did he think he wasn't good enough? Was he jealous of what others had? He said it was because he was afraid of his master, in which case perhaps he should have had the good sense to do something with his talent so that his master wouldn't be angry. He avoided doing something wrong, but he didn't really do anything right. He didn't do anything at all. If you really want to upset somebody, then one of the easiest ways is to refuse a gift given in good faith. A gift given in love. The worst thing we can do with what God has given us is nothing at all. If we don't use God's good gifts, nothing good will come. But good did come from the first two gifts in this parable. Well, five talents became five more. Two talents became two more. The master was pleased and said, well done, good and faithful servant. We don't know what they did to double their talents, but they were commended for it. 
we need to think about how we work for God, how we use our gifts. Perhaps we could say to God, I think I'm good at X, Y or Z. How can I use it for you? The master didn't get angry with the last man because he tried and failed, but because he didn't try at all. As we wait for Jesus, we must use our gifts well and faithfully so that when Jesus comes, he'll say, well done, good and faithful sir. Notwithstanding this parable and the way it ends, one thing we don't need to do is to fear our Lord and let that fear stop us from offering our service to God. Whether it's fear of God, our ability or the consequences, we are in service of a life-giving and a life-sustaining God. The call to trust, yes, is easier heard than followed, like so much of the life of faith. But if we can take encouragement from today's parable, then we can be active in service and we can take heart from the faithfulness of God. And if, when we come to times of uncertainty, then perhaps the prayer offered by the monk Thomas Merton might just be of help. He wrote this. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I am think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I'm doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Together we proclaim our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray to God the only giver of power for good. May all who confess your name be faithful stewards of what has been entrusted to them. As we look for the coming of Christ, 
We pray that the church on earth may always be ready to become one with the church of the blessed in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Where business is done in the world, drive out dishonesty and self-seeking. Bring to all people the knowledge that this world is not the end. As we work for the present good, let our eyes be lifted to the future glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Draw into your service all in our community, that they may be used for the coming of the kingdom. Shine your love on us, our families and friends, that we may live as children of the light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on those who have not fulfilled the best that is in them, hindered by sloth or circumstance or self-doubt. Rouse them to be active in doing your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who have come to their last day and passed into a new life. Confident that waking or sleeping we are with Christ, we pray that we shall always be ready to hear his call. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may faithfully respond to the grace given to us, we offer our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer a sign of peace to those with whom we're gathered and pray for God's peace to rest upon those from whom we are separated. this bread to set before you, which earth has given unto human hands of men, 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living one, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks that the King of glory is come, who overcomes the sting of death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at your right hand in glory, and we believe that he will come to be our judge. Therefore, with angels and their archangels, and with all the company of them, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is the light. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, according to mine, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are new, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. God of truth, we have seen with our eyes and touched with our hands the bread of life. Strengthen our faith that we may grow in love for you and for each other, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.